This is a very mysterious volcano. It's a caldera volcano that is filled up with water. It's a nice lake with swimmers and boats, but underneath there are hidden dangers. Not only a volcano that seems to be waking up a little bit because there's magma accumulating underneath. We also might have a sunken castle inside the caldera and a World War II plane that still carries the bombs, which makes it super dangerous to be boating above it. So let's have a deeper look into this. Well, when you think about volcanic eruptions, what do you think about? Or you think about earthquakes? Do you think about Germany? Most likely not, but we do have new seismic images. So is Germany going to blow up, guys? Well, the new seismic images reveal a dynamic magmatic system beneath Germany's Eiffel volcanoes. Have you heard about this? Volcanoes in Germany? Well, guys, you should listen to this. So scientists have identified a deep tilted magmatic structure beneath the Eiffel volcanic region in Germany after they have analyzed a lot of data from more than 495 seismic stations that were deployed between 2022 and 2023. And uh, the Eiffel region that is basically part of the Rhenish Massif in Western Germany, and it consists actually of hundreds of volcanic cones and explosion craters in Germany. And they are known as Mars, and they're scattered across the countryside. And they include, I've reported about this, I think a year and a half ago, the La Chazé. Doesn't that look peacefully? But if you watch my channel on a regular basis, you know, these peaceful looking lakes, they might be a crater. We recently talked about one in Oregon, but we have some in Campi Fligre even. So what's lurking underneath might be dangerous, guys. And since we're, well, no, I don't want to say since we're speaking about it, but that's not dangerous. But do me a favor, give this video an early like and hype. It helps my channel. doesn't cost you anything. So the La Chazé, a striking lake, a lake that fills the remnants of a gigantic volcanic caldera. So let's wind back the time to 12,900 years ago. That was during the late Pleistocene. The La Chazé volcano, it's a volcano erupted catastrophically, guys, in one of the largest volcanic events in Central Europe in the last 100,000 years. So not only Cambi Flegre can do that with the Monte Nuovo eruption, but no, this one, really, really bad. And only 12,900 years ago, the eruption, guys, listen to this, has reached the volcanic explosivity index of six. It has produced approximately six cubic kilometers of tephra. Tephra are these volcanic rocks, these smaller light volcanic rocks. If you have it in deep, dense magma, that's roughly two cubic kilometers of magma. And they have dispersing this pumice and ash across much of Europe. Pumice is also like very light volcanic material. And as we have it with these big eruptions, oh, another one, but that's in, in the sea. It's not a lake, the caldera that basically was formed through an event like this. Santorini, guys. Santorini and Santorini almost a year ago in February, this year, still this year, I want to say last year. Gosh, it has worried us a lot. And there was a magma intrusion happening with all these earthquakes. It was a big mystery. But who said it from the start? This is a magma intrusion. This was me. When a lot of other scientists said this is just an earthquake swarm. So these craters, wow, guys, and they collapse after a big eruption and then they fill with water sometimes. So the collapse of the magma chamber roof of that huge volcano there in Germany has formed a caldera that later filled with water, has created that circular La Chazé that we see today. So the Eiffel in Germany, if, if we look at this geologically, it belongs to the European a Cenozoic Rift System. So what is that? That's a diffuse zone of crustal stretching that also runs through the Rheingraben and the massive central in France. 
So although far away from any plate boundary, where we usually see the problems at plate boundaries, subduction zones, ring of fire, there we see the volcanoes, the earthquakes, the tsunamis, all that stuff that is not so good, right? Um, this rift system here remains slowly deforming. So persistent CO2 emissions, then there's minor earthquakes and crustal uplift that has about 0 0.7 millimeters, 0 0.75 millimeters, that's 0 0.02 inches per year. All that indicates that this region, guys, it's not extinct. But scientists think it's not extinct, but it's dormant. What I mentioned at the beginning and what we want to talk about, and you see this map here, it's the largest seismic experiment in Germany um, ever. So what you see on this map here is the location of these approximately 500 seismic stations that were installed in the Eiffel region between September 2022 and August 23. So they would not install them if they didn't think it's necessary that this is observed, right? We've seen stuff happening at the Lacha See. This is called the, or, or these stations are part of the large N experiment. So built in order to obtain the highest possible resolution image of the magmatic surface. And what we see in red, that's a fiber optic cable, actually. It's not a fault line or anything. It was used for supplementary measurements. So to understand what lies beneath, what is still there, what could cause trouble, the scientists from the German research, GFZ, that's the German Research Center for Geosciences, and the University of Potsdam, um, they have concluded this Eiffel Large N experiment between September 22 and August 23. And this really, guys, it was the largest passive uh, seismological deployment ever undertaken in Central Europe. Wow. I mean, imagine this, almost 500 stations, right? Dist distributed uh, across the Eiffel volcanic fields. It's a relatively small area for so many stations. And they were really spaced closely, as close as like, like a little bit more than half a mile, like one kilometer, 0 0.6 miles, especially in the Eastern sector. And then in addition to that, they complemented this array by a 64 kilometer long, that's 40 miles, a fiber optic cable that was also used as a distributed um, acoustic sensor. And this cable is capable of detecting like tiny ground vibrations along its entire length of that cable. You can imagine that if you have such a dense coverage over a not such such a large area um, that they could record thousands of small earthquakes and they basically could image the upper crust in an unprecedented detail. And I want to make this note, this was 20, 22, 23. If they use this, I think year by year or even month by month, they can even get more precise results if they use AI. So they have essentially performed a medical CT scan of the volcanic system that is there. And they have used data analysis, like employed machine learning algorithms for authentic event detection and precise localization of these events. So they have basically combined more than 60,000 P wave and 50,000 F wave pics. And then you see, if you see this, this scale here, that's in the next image here, this image is called the magma reservoir under the Lacha See. This is basically the record section on a, on a part of the large end stations for a certain sequence of earthquakes that were beneath Kruft at about a depth of 10 kilometers, 6.2 miles. Magnitudes range from 2.1 to below 0.4. So this high resolution tomographic model has revealed a cylindrical low velocity high VP VS ratio anomaly directly beneath the Lacha See volcano. Doesn't sound so good. Would you go for a swim in there? So this feature extends from about two to 10 kilometers. That's 1.6 to 6.2 miles in depth uh, with an estimated volume of roughly 
75 cubic kilometers, that's 18 cubic miles. And the anomaly dips about 53 degrees um, southeast, intersecting the Seagen thrust at around 10 kilometers of depth. This is a ge geometry that had slipped under the radar for previous lower resolution studies. And so what are the researchers now telling us? So according to the researchers, this structure likely represents a partially molten or fluid saturated reservoir. Reservoir sounds never good. Um, it's basically the remnant of the magma chamber that has fueled this almost 13,000 year old eruption. So something is still there. Interesting is, is it refilling, right? So the micro earthquakes cluster around the margins of the anomaly. Uh, and that could give us the zones of elevated pore pressure or thermal stress. I would like to deploy 500 stations to Campi Fligre, if I'm honest. They have stations, but they haven't done something similar like that, at least not as far as I know. And you know, I'm reporting about this all the time. So if you look at the next image, it looks like a spider web. It looks a little bit scary. It's like these thousands of microquakes, they mark active zones and the word active also doesn't sound good, right? If we look at greater depth between like 10 and 45 kilometers, that's roughly six to 28 miles, there's a series of deep, low frequency volcanic earthquakes. And this series of these volcanic earthquakes, they, they trace a vertical channel that is connecting to the upper mantle to the crust. So that's a pathway for rising CO2 and magmatic fluids. It's also something that doesn't sound so good, right? Pathway for magmatic fluids. So the colors, the, the more red they are, the deeper, at more depth do we see these earthquakes. So during this experiment that was lasting basically 12 months, um, they have recorded more just during that time. They have recorded more than 1,000 local micro-earthquakes in the East Eiffel volcanic field. Most were located along a fault zone. That's the Ochtendung fault zone. That is basically a near vertical structure at the eastern margin of the Neuwied Basin. And the earthquakes revealed at this fault that it's predominantly a strike slip faulting like the San Andreas fault or like what happened at the earthquake that we just had in Alaska, the Hubbard Glacier um, earthquake. If it's slipping, right? You stand here, your friend stands here, and both suddenly you're apart from each other if there's an earthquake. Um, some components of this fault are like normal fault components. And what they found is that the orientation of the p-axis varied systematically. What does that mean? That indicates that there's subtle stress rotations that are influenced by pressure changes in the underlying reservoir. Pressure changes in the reservoir, it's also not so good, right? So such behavior is typical for fluid-driven seismicity, where magmatic gases and hydrothermal fluids migrate along existing fractures and, and they can temporarily alter local stress fields, right? The big question in the room is, is there a magma chamber that is refilling? And then how fast is it refilling, right? For now, we're looking at the quakes. These small earthquakes, um, while imperceptible at the surface, map the invisible heartbeat of the crust that is there. It was invisible up until that study came. And the seismic reflections and the tomographic contrast that they were able to get be, um, beneath the Neuwied Basin, they also indicate that we have fluid accumulations at various crustal levels. Sounds like Campi Flegre a little bit, right? So these zones, they have reduced velocity, they contain CO2-rich fluids and hydrothermal brines that are basically trapped in porous layers or fractures that are there in the crust. 
And their presence is quite important and it's quite interesting because the problem is the fluids that are there, they can lubricate faults and can cause these faults to slip. They can lower their strength, the strength of the fault. They can trigger micro seismicity or even they can trigger micro seismicity even without tectonic stress. There is no tectonic stress in this regions, right? We know it. In the Eiffel, these processes appear to connect the deeper magmatic system with the upper crust. And that sustains this ongoing CO2 degassing that is observed at the surface. We have CO2 degassing too and somewhere else. I don't know, guys. Um, I think they will find out more about this system in the near future. So the coupling between fluids and fault lines helps to explain why the region experiences sporadic bursts of seismic activity despite its otherwise quiet appearance. So right now, there is an explanation for the unrest. They haven't found any refilling magma chamber. So that's why they're saying there are no signs of an imminent eruption. These fluids do not indicate any short-term eruption risk. The system remains dormant as it seems right now and the observed seismic and fluid activity only shows us that there's deep crustal dynamics but not an impending volcanic unrest. But, but guys, the results confirm that the Eiffel volcanic field is not extinct. Its subsurface is still thermally and mechanically active. Um, it has a complex network with magma, gas, and faults that are still evolving within this continental crust. So now they, they have this continuous monitoring um, of the seismicity, of the deformation, of the gas emissions um, in place so that they can detect long-term changes um, in this delicate balance to see is there something else happening, right? Um, I thought you found that interesting. If you did, leave a like and a hype, guys. Check out the end screen for more interesting videos. I would like to see you again in a second. Bye-bye.